<laughs> but the scripture I'm going to quote is, out of the abundance of the heart, the yeah. mouth speaks. And it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, is what comes out. So, what we have to be aware is what is going on in our core. When you look at the earth's core, and that's what I was looking up this morning. If the earth's core gets too hot, if it starts to heat up a lot, the plates on the surface of the earth start to shift. And that can start earthquakes and volcano eruptions because lava is flowing under the surface of the earth. And there are times that we, as God's people, have lava flowing under our emotions. We have a movement going on inside of us. We're shaky and easily moved because we're full of fear, full of anxiety, full of worry, full of frustration. I mean, just all kind of stuff breaking loose inside of us. And we have a difficult time controlling the storms that are brewing from within. So it's like no matter what's going on outside, it's not the outside that's the biggest threat to us. The biggest threat to us is what's going on deep down within, below the earth's core, below the surface of your smile and your praise the Lord's. Below all of that, there's st there are storms brewing. There are plates shifting. There's a shakiness of moving, a shaking going on. There's there's overheating going on. There, there there's pressure building up, and and we're trying our best not to explode and spew out all over everything, making a mess because of what's going on in here. So the thing we have to do is ask God to go in, go deep down within, and calm the storm. We have to ask God to go deep down within and heal the pain, remove the fear, put out the fires of panic so that we're not running around like chickens with our head cut off, trying to put out this fire, trying to put out that fire, trying to handle this, trying to handle that. No. Look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. And what you can handle, what you cannot control, ask God to bring the best out of the worst circumstances. And he will. He will surprise you. Mm -hmm. That's what he says in Psalms 46. And I'm going to quote it. I'm going to read it to you. Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, though COVID is raging all over the world. That's my little insert. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. That includes Jeanette. That includes Lynn. That includes Peter. That includes Lynette. That includes Kathy. That includes Anthony. That includes Rashad. That includes Andrea. That includes my sister Renee. That includes my cousin Viviata. That includes every single one of us, Matt, Davina, all of us. We shall not be moved. Hmm. Listen, no matter what is shaking, bacon, 
we have a Lord and Savior that is totally in control with all authority over every kind of storm and shaking going on. God shall help her. This is verse 5. And that right early. You hear that, Jeanette? That right early. Quick, fast, in a hurry. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. So we can be encouraged knowing that for every obstacle, for every challenge, for every everything coming at us, for every kind of attack, for every fear tactic, for every crisis, for every plague, God is in the midst of us. God will help us in that right early. There is no need to fear because God is in control. The ship cannot be shipwrecked. The ship cannot capsize because Jesus is down there sleeping. He's right there, right in here, sleeping. He's putting us at peace, putting us at rest. Come unto me, he says. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You have no need to shake with the swelling thereof. Let the earth shake with the swelling thereof. You don't need to shake with the earth. You don't need to be moved with the mountains into the midst of the sea. Don't dance the dance of the world. Sit and rest in the Lord. His perfect love still reassures in every trial. So you've got to call him. When you get frightened, call him. With loving care, he'll lift your burdens and you'll rest. Why? The Lord is near. Refuse to fear. Enjoy his love. He is, listen, there's a song, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is too difficult for him. With God, everything is possible. Everything is possible. There's not one thing Satan can throw your way that God can't block. God will talk to your trial. God will talk to your challenge. God will talk to your spiritual attackers and say, talk to the hand, baby. Bam, you're out of here. Why? Because God will not allow the enemy to just trespass and wreak havoc in your life, and he not come to rescue you. No matter what is going on, no matter what the threats are, God is in control of your life. God is in control of your health. God is in control of your finances. God is in control of your circumstances. God knows how to work out the detail. We have to decide. What do we believe? Whose report are we going to believe? Are we going to believe the report of the world or are we going to believe the word of God? Are we going to trust in our Lord and Savior or are we going to trust in our senses, leaning to our own understanding, panicking out of our own fears, reacting out of our own panic? What are we going to do? Hmm. That's why it's good to acknowledge him in all 
your ways. He will direct your path, but you have to get in the habit of asking, Lord, do I stay or do I go? Lord, is it now or is it later? And if later, when? God will direct your path. See, when you need wisdom, he will give it to you liberally. Or he will upbraid you not. He'll give it to you. But you got to start asking for wisdom. See, when we're going through a dark area, listen, listen, listen. Thank you, Lord. When I used to lead Milton, because he was 100% blind, couldn't even see light or dark. It was all just black. When he would hold my arm, the way they taught us at Braille Institute. He had to totally trust me leading him. I not only, now I'm just a human being. I not only had to watch where his feet went and where his body was in position and proportion to everything else. I had to also watch his head because brother man was tall. And the tree branch that wouldn't hit me would bop him upside the head. So I had to watch for the low-hanging branches as well as, as the dips in the road and the things that would become obstacles. I had to work him around. Well, he's holding me. He's trusting me through that. And there are times when I would say, okay, stand still. And he would be like, well, what's wrong? And I'm thinking, okay, baby, I just got to figure out how to get you through this. So they taught us in Braille Institute, fold our arm behind us, and that would automatically make them line up right behind us, and we could both go through a narrow passageway without them tripping over anything. There, see, when you're being led, you have got to trust the one who's leading you. It's all right to question. It's all right to ask because you want to know. There's no problem with that. God's ego is not at stake with you asking him questions. He's pretty secure. But you must be very careful as he leads you. You can't say, well, it sounds like it feels like this is happening over here. So even though you're taking me this way, I don't want to go that way because that doesn't make sense to me. The blind cannot lead the guide. The guide must lead the blind. So you have to determine who is your guide. Is God going to really be your guide or are you going to continue to lean to your own understanding, prolonging the misery. Yeah, that's, that's a difficult place. That's a difficult thing to determine. When you're prolonging your misery like that, you have to be careful because you can cause more harm. I was watching a sci-fi the other night and I was watching how the rocket left, how the rocket left the ground and is battling gravity. The biggest, the biggest battle is leaving the ground. Some of us as human beings, our biggest battle is leaving the groundedness of our understanding. We're leaving all that we know. We're leaving all that's familiar. We're leaving all that's you know, that feels safe, that undergirds us. We're safe on the ground, flat-footed. But no, God sometimes wants to call us off the ground where there's nothing under us. There is no safety net. And we're fighting the gravity of our understanding. We're fighting the gravity of our fears. And as we're leaving, what ends up happening? As we move up in the Lord and follow him in the direction he wants us to go, no matter what's going on around us, keep yourself focused on him. And as you're leaving the ground, guess what? Some things are going to have to fall off of you, baby. You're going to have to let go of some stuff. See, the rockets, they have to let go of certain things. You notice they fall off. They get up to a certain 
atmosphere, certain stratosphere, whatever they call it, and some more things are falling off. Then they move into outer space, totally out of the atmosphere of the earth. And what happens? They get to a certain level and some more things are falling off. See, when God is moving you through the shaking, when God is moving you through the storm, and he's elevating you to a higher level, there are going to be some friends, some habits, some ways, some safety nets that you're going to have to let go of in order to go as high as God wants you to go. And it's not going to it's going to sound like a pure lie. It's not going to be money that gets you there or keeps you there. God will get the money to you. God will get the means to you. But when God starts telling you, I want you up there, I'm tired of you being at this level. You've been down here long enough. Deuteronomy chapter 2. We have circled this mountain long enough. How long will you circle the mountain? Worrying about the future. Worrying about what's chasing you from behind. Worrying about your circumstances. Worrying about the consequences of making decisions. You better follow God, baby. That is your only safety net. I don't care if there's nothing under you but clouds and rain lightning and thunder. God is your safety net. He will get you there totally safely. And the blessings will pour in, baby. God is your income. God is your flow. God is your protection. God is your shield. God is your shelter. God is your refuge. When you are going up as that rocket leaves the earth and you're getting rid of this and getting rid of that with every level, every height you go to, every degree, you get to a certain point, there's a countdown and things start falling off that rocket. Then you start to level off. And now you're starting to head towards your destination. No safety net is under you. There's not a slingshot that can catch you if you fall. Because see, you have to remember, when you follow God's direction, he's taking you above your enemies. He's taking you above the storm. You're not going to fall. You're not going to crash. It won't be a crash landing either unless you take things into your own hand and handle it according to what you know. See, God wants to take you to what you don't know. God wants to take you where you've never been before. And that's why he allows some of the shaking that goes on in your life. You're looking at and life like it's one great big storm, like it's a horrible thing going on and it's a dark time in your life and you don't like the clouds and you don't like the thunder and lightning. The thunder is loud and it's scary and you're, you're afraid of it. That's his secret pavilion, the darkness and the thunder, the clouds. That's, what, that's where he's found, baby. The darker the clouds, the closer God is. And it's hard for us to see it for looking at the clouds. Like they say, you can't see the forest for the trees. We oftentimes can't see God for the clouds and the thunder and the lightning. But God is going to take you through all that, baby. You're not going to get struck by lightning. You're not going to fall to the ground. He'll get you there. But you must follow him. If you want to know what he's got for you, you've got to follow on to know what he's got for you. No matter what 
it feels like under you, no matter how scary it is or how afraid you are of heights. And that's another thing. Many of God's people are afraid of heights. God is trying to take you higher, but you're afraid of heights. You're afraid of the unknown. You don't know if he knows what he's doing. You don't know if he's going to forget he's got you up there and go and have a coffee break and oh, there you go, splat. You better get in God's word. Some of you, God wants to take you places through the storm. And you will never get there as long as you're looking at the situation through your own eyes. As long as you're reacting to the situation through your own imagination, your own issues, your own fears, your own insecurities, your own mental limits. Some of you can't see no further than the nose on your face. How far your foot can go in front of you. That's as far as your sights go. But what did God tell Abraham? You see that land out there? As far as your eyes can see, that have I given you. How far can you see? In the midst of all that shaking, bacon, how far can your eyes see? How high can you look? How high can you reach? How high are you willing to soar? Shedding the weights that so easily beset you as God moves you higher and higher and higher. Getting rid of the familiar, moving into the unknown. How far are you willing to set your sights? You have no idea what God has in store for you. Don't look at yourself based on your high school diploma. Don't look at yourself based on the lack thereof. Don't look at yourself based on how well or how poorly you read. Don't look at yourself based on what you can and cannot do. Because it ain't about you, baby. Hmm. It's what God can do through you. So you have to remember the word says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Mm -hmm. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Nothing shall by any means harm me. Huh? No evil shall befall me. Think about all those promises. Those aren't maybes. Those are definite promises. So as everything is shaking around and things are heating up in the earth's core and your emotions are boiling over, baby, you better get up under God real quick. Get him to settle you and stabilize you and stop you from capsizing. See, folks get to panicking in the boat. They get to jumping around like a little jumping bean. And next thing you know, flip, there goes the boat. But if they sit their little happy hips down and wait on the Lord, the Lord can use the ocean to drive them to safety. Who's in control of your boat? How far can your eyes see? Are you willing to go where God wants to take you, even to the unknown, where no man has gone before? That's my question to you. Now you take that to the Lord and ask him, Lord, where, when, how, what? He'll tell you. Psalms 32, he says, I will lead you in the way you should go. And he will. Don't be like the mule. Don't be stubborn. Stuck on, stuck on gravity. No, baby, you better be willing to leave the ground. Leave the familiar. And go into the unknown. It ain't unknown to God. It's just unknown to you. So I ask you, who you going with? Where you going? Are you going to go? Or are you going to sit? 
on your familiarities and on your complacent, uh, this is all I know, never done that before, excuses, and not go anywhere God wants you to go. Which way are you going to take that? And I'm going to leave you with that question because you're the only one who can answer it. You're the only one that can go to God and get that answer. How far can you see? How far are you willing to go? And what are you willing to let go of to get there? Hmm. Even if it's your pride. Interesting. God bless you.